Section 10.5, buying a house with a mortgage. A homeowner's mortgage is a long-term loan in which the property is pledged as security for payment of the difference between the down payment and the sale price. There are two types of mortgages, conventional loan and an adjustable rate, also called a variable rate loan. The major difference between the two is the interest rate for a conventional loan is fixed for the duration of the loan, whereas the interest rate for the variable rate loan may change every period as specified in the loan. Lending institutions may require the buyer to pay one or more points at, for a loan at the time of closing. According to the IRS, points are interest prepaid by the buyer and may be used to reduce the stated interest rate the lender charges. One point is equal to 1% of the loan amount. Let's work an example. The Martins wish to purchase a home selling for $249,000. They plan to obtain a loan from their bank. The bank requires a 15% down payment payable to the seller and a payment of two points payable to the bank at the time of closing. Determine the Martins down payment. The down payment is 15% of the purchase price, $249,000 or $37,350. Determine the amount of the mortgage. So the amount of the mortgage is going to be the selling price minus the down payment, in this case, $211,650. Determine the cost of the two points paid by the Martins on their mortgage. The points are based on the amount of the mortgage, not on the purchase price. So this is 2% of the mortgage amount, or $4,233. So at closing, the Martins will pay the down payment of $37,350 to the seller, and the two points are $42,33 to the bank. To qualify for a mortgage, banks use a formula to determine the maximum monthly payment that they believe is within the purchaser's ability to pay. They calculate the adjusted monthly income, which equals the gross monthly income minus any fixed monthly payments, which are defined to be more than 10 payments remaining. They multiply the adjusted monthly income by 28%, and this is the maximum monthly payment the lending institution believes the purchaser can afford. This is, includes principal, interest, property taxes, and insurance. The Gunther's grossly month income is $3,200. They have 25 remaining car payments of $335. They're applying for a 15-year, $150,000 mortgage at 5% interest. The taxes and insurance are $225 per month. The credit union will approve a loan that has a total monthly payment of principal interest, taxes, and insurance that is less than or equal to 28% of their adjusted monthly income. Determine 28% of their adjusted monthly income. So their monthly income is $3,200, but they need to deduct that car payment because there's more than 10 payments left. So their um, adjusted monthly income is $2,865, and we're going to find 28% of that. And so that is at eight hundred two twenty. dollars So that's the maximum amount that the bank thinks that they can pay for principal interest, taxes, and insurance. Principal and interest payment formula. So here's the formula that we use. It's the same formula that we saw in the last section for installment loans. M is the principal and interest payment. P is the amount of the mortgage. R is the interest rate as a decimal. N is the number of payments per year, which is generally 12 for a mortgage. And then T is the time in years. And again, notice in the exponent, in the denominator, it's a negative exponent. Use the principal and interest payment to determine the Martins' monthly principal and interest payment. Call that the Martins are seeking a 30-year, $211,650 mortgage with an interest rate of 7%. So we're going to use the formula. Here's the values we're going to put in. Principal amount, $211,650. Interest rate is a decimal, 0.07. 12 payments per year for 30 years. And as we did with the installment payment formula, we're going to simplify the numerator and denominator separately. So in the numerator, I'll take 0.07 and divide by 12, and then I'll multiply by the 211,650. Likewise, in the denominator, I'll take 0.07, divide by 12, add to 1, and also simplify the exponent. And here's my next step. And then finally, I'm going to multiply in the numerator, multiply in the denominator, subtract in the denominator, and then finally divide. And so the monthly principal and interest payment is going to be $1,408.11. Now we want to figure out the total cost of the home. So we remember they were buying it for $249,000. They had to make a 15% down payment, and they had to make two, a payment of two points 
to the bank at the time of closing. And their monthly principal and interest payment is $1,408.11 for 30 years. What's the total amount they'll pay for the house over the 30 years? So we have to consider the down payment, the points, the total of the monthly payment. So we're going to take 1408.11 times 12 payments per year times 30 years. So if they keep that loan for the whole 30 years, they'll pay $506,919.60. And then we're going to add to that the points and the down payment. So the total cost of this home, and remember it costs $249,000, over the life of the loan is 548502.60. We can also use a table, as we did in the installment payment section, to determine monthly principal and interest. And in this case, it gives us not just an interest payment here, but the actual principal and interest payment per $1,000 of mortgage. So we want to do a 20-year mortgage when we're going to finance $245,000 at 5.5%. So we look in the table, and we look under a 20-year column, and we go to the 5.5% row, and we see the multiplier per $1,000 of mortgage is 6.87887. So in their loan... Of $245,000, there's $241,000 increments. So we're going to take that multiplier and multiply by 245, and we get a monthly payment of principal and interest of $1,685.32. An amortization schedule repeatedly applies a simple interest formula month to month on the unpaid balance, and you can calculate the principal and interest for all the payments. However, a listing showing this can be done on a computer, and it's called an amortization schedule. And this is what it would look like. It shows the interest rate. This is the one for the Martins. The amount of the loan, the number of periods, that's the uh, 12 times the number of years, the monthly payment, the terms of the loan, and then it shows each payment, how much of the payment goes to interest and how much goes to principal. Adjustable rate mortgages are ones in which the interest rate is not fixed for the entire length of the loan. Generally, the, an ARM rate is fixed for an initial period called the initial rate period. Thereafter, the rate may go up or down based on movements in the interest rate market. Most ARMs have an initial rate period of five or seven years. The initial rate is usually lower than the rate for conventional mortgages, thus making the loan attractive to buyers. After the initial rate period, the more rate may rise and cause the monthly payments also to rise. Typically, after the initial rate period, the ARM rate is adjusted about once a year. To prevent rapid increases, some banks will have a rate cap, and this is the maximum amount that can, the rate can change, and there can be also a periodic rate uh, cap, which uh, would apply to each change in the interest rate. An aggregate rate cap li limits the interest rate change over the length of the loan. Other types of mortgages, there's FHA mortgages, VA, graduated payment mortgage, balloon mortgages, and so forth. And here's a website, www.makinghomeaffordable.gov, which gives a lot of information on home buying and mortgages.